Hi, I'm Momita. And today we are going to talk about archetypes and how they are connected with your life theme. I'm going to channel Yeshua and I'm recording this video a few days after I recorded the channel session. One person can have more than one archetype and think of archetypes as a being by themselves who wants to experience themselves through you. I know it may sound crazy at first how that's possible. So some example of archetypes could be the explorer, which is my archetype, the victim, the wounded healer, the lovers. So there are billions of archetypes and the first uh, concept of archetypes were, was introduced by Carl Jung. He has done some phenomenal work. Every person has multiple archetypes in them. The archetypes are specific themes that you will start with and eventually reach a maturation stage. So there are various phases of the archetype, like the hero or the warrior, the healer. I was exploring this new method of art-based self-coaching called Neurographica, where the creator, the author, Pavel Piskarev, he talks about the archetypes and that really created a lot of curiosity in me. It's very interesting and I hope you enjoy the questions that I have to ask Yeshua. Before we get started, I'm launching a new umbrella term, which I call as the Ascension Program. It is an overall theme which will help you grow and develop spiritually, personally, and give you access to different kinds of tools, techniques, methods, meditations, what have you, in order to spiritually ascend. I'm going to launch a lot of videos, courses, workshops. Some of them would be free. So I would highly recommend that if you haven't joined my Facebook group or my newsletter, please join because I don't always post behind the scenes on YouTube, but you will get early access and all the free sessions that I offer. I'm very excited about it. Check out the link to my newsletter or my Facebook in the description below. Now I'm going to switch the recording to the day when I recorded the archetype channeling. So let me start by asking the primary questions. What are archetypes? How are they connected to us? Are they same as egregores? When a person develops, do they move from one archetype to another? In terms of our spiritual development outside our bodies, when we die, are we moving to our next corresponding archetype of growth? Egregores are collective consciousness, which are giant thought forms created by groups of people. If a certain group of people are having the same kind of idea or belief about something which they strongly resonate with, then they create a collective consciousness about that same idea. So those are known as egregores, meaning the group thinks of the same thing and they are feeding into a giant thought cloud. At some point, the thoughts become so much energized with being fed by the group energy that it starts having a consciousness of its own. And the larger they are, the stronger they become. Then they start influencing other people who are not even thinking the same thoughts, but the egregores will start influencing people to think the same thought because now they have a consciousness of their own. They want people to think about the topic that they are made up of because that powers them or gives them energy to survive because now they want to survive as an independent in entity. And for that, they need people to think about them because when people think about them, they're feeding the egregores energy so that the egregore can survive on its own. And now I'm going to channel the answers to these four questions. Dear ones, I am Yeshua and today I will talk about the archetypes. For example, I come from the archetype of the Christ consciousness that this channel is connected to and some of you who are watching this video are connected to. So, what are archetypes?
allow me to download some information in this channel so that it's easier to disperse the information. So before I explain what archetypes are, it's important for you to understand how it is related to your consciousness and other beings' consciousness. Remember, the reason why you are having this physical existence or experience is to experience who you are. So God wants to experience who it is because God is infinite and God doesn't know who it is fully. And in order to experience who God is, God splits its consciousness and focuses on one aspect of it at a time simultaneously. And together, God can have experience of all parts of it which makes God who it is individually as well as collectively. So, God is the sum of its part and yet it is more than its part when operating together as a collective consciousness. But in order to experience who God is, when it's functioning as a collective, it must understand how it is functioning as an individual. So, each and every individual that you are are expressions of God in its own unique ways and God, God is experience itself through your experiences and also collectively, so there are different perspectives to it. And God can experience multiple collectives simultaneously because that is the paradox. God cannot wait to experience itself, so it will not experience linearly through one life at a time. It will experience itself through multiple lives all at once, together, simultaneously, because time doesn't exist in the other realms. Now that you understand this, what is archetype? Now, remember, there are different levels of consciousness. Humans or animals or other beings in the 3D world have a specific way of experiencing this theme of who you are. So, let me go to much more basic level. So, there are one-dimensional beings, one-dimensional who only exist in one dimension, and those beings experience the minutest form of what God could be. Now, there are much minuter experiences of God too, but let me stick to this dimensional perspective for now to avoid complications and confusion. Single dimensional being experience only and only one aspect or theme of God, an expression of God as to who God is at one dimensional level. Similarly, there are two dimensional beings who experience at least and a minimum of two expressions of God within itself throughout its lifetime. So you as humans and any other being who are three dimensional in nature will at minimum experience three themes of who God is in your life but usually at your level you will not just experience three but there will be more to those themes so think of you as a collection of themes that you wish to experience now when you are born you are born with this theme, this group of themes already planted within you. And you, as a living being, wish to experience each one of those themes individually in much more depth. And various aspects of these themes, because remember, all themes have dual, duality aspects. And the point of experiencing these themes are 
experiencing the balance point, which is the third aspect, the middle point of the duality. So whatever theme you have chosen in life is just not one theme. It is a collection of themes. So depending on which age you are, each thing will unfurl and you are going to go through life events that is going to help you understand, experience that theme in great depth and detail. So you are going to experience a negativity or the negative side of the theme because that's part of the duality and also the positive aspects of the theme, which is also part of the duality. And eventually when you have faced both sides of the theme, then you would want to integrate both sides and approach the balance point, the mature version, the centering point of that theme through your life experiences, through your decisions, through your choices. And once you have reached that center point, the maturation of that specific theme, then you are going to move on to the next theme. However, the development of these themes do not happen linearly it's not like you end one theme and then you begin the other and then you go through the maturation process and then you go to the other. It's not like that. It's not linear one after the other. Sometimes some themes will be activated together all at once. So it really depends what theme you wish to experience. So in childhood, you will experience a bunch of themes which you are going to grow through and mature in some aspects. Some things will continue throughout your life. Some will end through maturation at a certain age. And then while it's ending, there are beginning of other themes. It could be one, it could be more than one. So it is like a blending in. One theme is ending, the other is beginning while this one is maturing. So in this manner, you grow as a person and you experience those themes. And towards the end of life, you have fully experienced all the themes that you needed to experience to understand the greater overarching theme of your life, which was a sum of these parts or these sub-themes. So, now that you understand your life theme, how are the archetypes related to that? Now, remember... These themes that you experience are an expression of God wanting to experience itself. And as I said before, God has split itself into multiple sub parts. Think of these archetypes as consciousness of their own, or you could also call them mini gods. So to simplify things, but they are technically not gods. They are also beings who have their own consciousness. This is what some of you may refer to as oversoul. The concept of oversoul is a collection of minor souls and variations of those souls. So the oversoul is the main archetype experiencing the sub archetypes within itself simultaneously. So, for example, my archetype or over soul is the Christ consciousness. And I have split myself into different parallel realities across time in different realms and times of humanity to experience my core theme of Christ consciousness. Now, this is not as simple as you think because I wish to experience myself in different ways, what would happen if Christ's consciousness decided to devolve instead of evolve? So there are certain humans who are experiencing my archetype or my theme as a devolution in some parallel worlds in a different time period where from an enlightened being, they are moving and devolving to becoming psychopaths or narcissists. So I want to experience how devolution looks like because, again, duality, right? I want to experience both sides of the equation to fully understand who I am. And in this parallel version of your earth, some of you are going through the opposite end of the spectrum where you are starting with the negative end of the Christ consciousness theme and moving towards a positive where you're evolving 
to the maturation of that theme. Now, the Christ consciousness or the oversoul of Christ consciousness is a huge, huge theme. And it has many, 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 many sub themes. So I'm using my example to give you an idea how this archetypal thing works. But remember, I'm not the only archetype. There are different kinds of oversoul, different kinds of archetypes. So using my example, it is easier for you to understand what archetypes mean. So for example, Christ consciousness archetype has sub themes like compassion, like love, unconditional love for others, or true understanding of other human beings as to who they are, and also helping them realize that they are also God. So there are many other aspects of this theme. I am also a healer. I heal people. And I also encompass the theme of victimhood. What do I mean by that? So victimhood is a theme that many of you, especially women on your earth, on this version of earth, are going through, where they experience a negative side of victimhood archetype which is again a sub archetype of the main archetype of Christ consciousness, which is feeling of helplessness, powerlessness, not being able to take action, stand up for yourself, fight for your rights and say no, draw boundaries. So things are done to you instead of you being in your own power and control of your situation. So this is the negative aspect of victimhood. Now, what is the positive aspect? How does this victimhood theme mature? So over a period of time, those who are experiencing this archetype of victimhood, irrespective of your gender, you are going to realize more and more that this is not serving you anymore. And you're not enjoying the experiences this archetype is bringing you. So then you will be seeking the positive end, which is empowerment, which is standing up for yourself, which is fighting for your rights, which is drawing boundaries, saying no, and not feeling any shame or guilt to ask for what you want. That is the positive end of the victimhood where you are using your power to become a powerful person. So the victim archetype is going from the state of powerlessness to the state of being powerful. And you cannot be powerful if you have not experienced the opposite of it first. So this is the theme, the exploration of this archetype, which many of you are exploring at this point and eventually will reach a maturation point where you realize that being too powerful can also be harmful if you are not mindful in how you use your power. So then you are going to again have some negative experiences being on the positive spectrum of power where you realize that what you are doing is harmful for others because you have the power and you can wield the power easily. So then you are going to try to find the balance point where you know when to step down and when you know when to step up the balance point, the middle ground. And that is when this theme will mature. So these archetypes have a direct influence on your life's theme because you are a cell in God's body. Understand this. So you are contained within this archetype of Christ consciousness, those of you are. There are many other people who are parts of other archetypes. So the themes that is relevant for this archetype to experience itself as to who it is, you are going to experience a minor subset of these greater arching themes. And through the experience of these themes, simultaneously sometimes, you are going to have a clear picture of who you are because you are not one archetype. You are a combination of many. Eventually, you will realize that you are more than this archetypal experiences that you are having. And towards the end of your life, that is when you will decide that I want to experience more of who I am outside these physical limitations or these kinds of archetypes that I had chosen to experience. That is when you will, your soul will choose to die and move to the spirit realm, where again, you are going to experience a different kind of archetypal energy. Now, this depends from person to person. 
you may experience a deeper experience of these archetypes that you had experienced in your physical life in the spirit realm in a different way in a different dimension that i cannot describe in words because humans do not have words to describe them or you may choose to experience a different set of archetypes that you hadn't experienced in the physical life in the spirit realm or you could simply choose to have very different kinds of experiences which are a larger subset of archetypes in terms of moving up outside of the oversoul archetype and moving to a greater version something beyond the oversoul that depends again on what kind of life theme you have chosen say for example ascended masters would want very rapid spiritual growth they wouldn't settle for anything that is too slow or too bland so a lot of you who are experiencing extreme challenges in different aspects of your life have chosen the past or path of ascendant mastery because you want to have experiences of five to ten lifetimes in one lifetime because you cannot wait to experience who you are you're that excited you are like pro gamers as in your video game terminology where easy game doesn't excite you you want to experience the challenges and the difficulties because it's a bigger loot it's a bigger reward bigger prize faster growth huge expansion in a shorter experience of your life so now that you understand what archetypes are i'm going to give you a brief idea of egregores now egregores are giant thought forms but they are not technically archetypes however they are a reflection of the archetypal thoughts and themes people have so the archetype is the origin point from which you are born wanting to experience specific subset of themes from that archetype and those are given to you since birth and you unravel them as you grow each theme keeps coming up so you are living two or three archetypes at the same time in that point of life wherever you are you are experiencing there will be a few dominant ones that you are actively using and there will be many recessive ones which are not being actively used or they will be activated later or you have reached a maturation point and you use it sometimes not often so in this fashion whatever thoughts you have as a result of experiencing certain themes in your archetype there are many people who are also experiencing similar themes and having similar thoughts so egregores are created when a group of people at the same time have the same thoughts and it is really a group energy of 100 or more people it creates a strong thought form of the same thought it becomes so strong when you're feeding your thought energy by focusing on the same thought over and over again you're feeding your energy into that thought and when multiple people are doing the same thing it becomes very strong and it can survive on its own it becomes an entity of its own and once it becomes entity what would all living entity want to do continue to live that's the way life is to continue existence in order to continue it's going to want more people feeding it with thought energy so it's going to influence more people to think about it so that it receives the energy that it needs now what is the purpose of egregores egregores on your planet play an important part in helping you realize your themes say for example people who are still in the victimhood the negative aspect of victimhood have created egregores of helplessness powerlessness say for example on your planet a lot of women feel powerless just because they believe they are women and they can be used and exploited and abused in whichever way so a lot of women are still going through the victimhood and they have created giant egregores of victimhood and those egregores in return are making more women feel the victimhood so you might wonder that if i am under the influence of egregores where do i have free will now remember the egregore's role is to make you experience your theme very strongly so much that you desire 
it activates the other archetypal energies within you that would make you feel, okay, I have had enough. Now I want to move to a new thing or move towards a maturation of this particular archetype. Say, for example, for victimhood archetype, if you're in the negative end of the victimhood where you are feeling helpless and powerless and have already been under influence of egregores who continue making you feeling more helpless and powerless, at certain point, you will want to break through that so the egregores are basically bringing you to that verge of breakthrough by constantly influencing you. Then the, the desire of breaking through will move you to the next level of your archetypal theme, which is a positive aspect of victim mode, which is the empowerment aspect. So the moment you have that desire, you would want to break through the influence of this egregore that is having on you. And in that process, you will create newer forms of thoughts which will make you a um, sorry the power went off there are some power fluctuations here and i was channeling so i didn't recognize that the power was gone to complete what yeshu was saying he was saying that once you become a match to those egregores you are basically moving to a newer parallel reality when you have a desire to transcend the negative aspects of your archetype to the positive one, you will have new desires, hence new thought forms. And hence you will be a match to a different parallel earth where there are different egregores who are the empowerment aspects. You will become a match to them and then the empowerment egregores will allow you to experience the theme, the positive aspect of your victimhood theme. So this is just an example using one theme but you get the point. It is applicable for all archetypes and there are millions of archetypes. It is not possible for me or anybody to highlight which archetypes a person is going through because there are many permutation combination. You will have many archetypes within you. So based on your theme and time of growth, you are going to go through different parallel alerts influenced by the egregores to bring out the theme that you are meant to live. So the egregores make you go through the extremes of those themes, be it the positive side or the negative side, until you decide that, no, you want to experience a balance point after having experienced both sides. That is when the archetypal theme that you wanted to experience matures. And once you have matured or reached this stage of maturation, then you would want to experience other archetypes, but this doesn't happen linearly. Like one is ending, the other is beginning. It is happening simultaneously. One theme is maturing, and at the same time, two or more themes are starting to emerge. The other archetypal themes that you want to experience simultaneously. So some of the archetypal themes will be dominant two or three at a certain point of time. The other archetypal themes that you already contain within you either have finished their development, depending on what age you are, or they will be unlocked at a new level when you reach a certain vibrational state or energetic frequency that's when the new archetypes that you want to experience will be unlocked while there is a stage of maturation for the other ones that you are going through so in this manner you experience different archetypal themes through your life and that allows not only for you to realize who you are through these archetypal themes but also source to realize who it is through those experiences because source is experience itself through you and after a point when your soul will realize that it has experienced whatever you needed to experience in physical lifetime and now it wants to experience more, then it will choose to die. It will choose to leave the body and continue the exploration of archetypes in the spirit realm. It could be based on going deeper into the theme you experienced into the physical life and I mean your exploration in the spirit, spiritual realm or it could be experiencing different sets of archetypes entirely different from what you experienced or it could be moving beyond your archetypes because even if you consider archetypes to be having the over soul consciousness you may want to experience the level beyond your over soul so which is another archetype because archetypes are consciousness of their own so it depends from person to person and there are many variations which i believe Yeshu has not discussed because there will be infinite such possibilities so I hope this gives you clarity. Now I'm going to move on to my next set of questions.